Oh, hello ladies and gentlemen. It has been some time since I've talked about this person. Which person, you might be asking? Well, allow me to set the scene. It was a few months ago. I made a video discussing my points and why I believed the critical drinker was a bad reviewer. More specifically, with his glass onion video. Now, I still stand by everything I stated in that video. Even if the feedback was mixed, I still believe I made a good point. And thus, I still stand by everything I said. And so, once I completed that video, I moved on. I never thought I'd have to speak about him ever again. But... So yeah, the Critical Drinker has made another bad point. But on what topic now, you might be wondering? Well, it's his Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse video. You may be asking yourself, why? What could, what could he have possibly said to warrant such a video? Well, to simply put, the Drinker once again lies about the movie despite apparently being an honest review channel, and tried to slip in a little race feud in his little review, while completely missing the point of the movie. Hold up! Wait a minute! Something ain't right! Oh, I'm not joking. Drinker genuinely tried to connect imaginary dots by heavily implying that Peter B. Parker is some sad and washed up oaf just because he's a white male. And if you don't believe me, here's the clip now. Also, I can't shake the feeling that the script is doing everything in its power to play down Peter Parker, like it's afraid the audience will somehow start rooting for him over Miles if he's shown to be too capable and confident. The first movie portrayed him as an ageing, burned out loser who only redeems himself at the end, while the second film morphs him into a bumbling, hapless father in a pink bathrobe who for some reason keeps taking his baby along on life-threatening adventures despite having a perfectly capable mother at home to look after it. Is this some weird attempt to mock and belittle the spider man that most people know and love, who incidentally just happens to be the only straight white man in the entire movie? I don't know man, it just kind of leaves a sour taste in my mouth, that's all. Wow. Just wow. The thing is, if this came from anyone else, I wouldn't really care. Just ignore the obvious race baiting and move on. Except... This isn't just some ordinary person. He's a review channel with a large following who people genuinely listen to and judge their opinions off by his videos. Also, you shouldn't feel the need to try and validate your opinion on whether you like or dislike a movie off someone's video, by the way. I think I should just make that clear. If you like or don't like something, just accept it. It's your opinion. So you might understand why I'd be a little bit ticked when someone like this tries to sneak in a little race baiting into his video and intentionally lies about, about the movie. And the thing is, this isn't the first time he's lied about a major character in a movie. No, no, no. Take his Creed video. Drinker completely and utterly does not understand who Rocky is as a character and allows his own personal views to obscure the, the actual objective truth to who Rocky is, and thus lies to the viewer and might dampen their opinion on the movie itself. Of who's simultaneously the best and the worst part of this movie. Like I said earlier, Rocky Balboa ended his story on a perfect bittersweet note. He'd overcome his grief at the death of Adrian, he'd reconnected with his estranged son, and proven that he still had what it took to go the distance, both in the ring and in life. And there was even a hint of a relationship with Marie. I was happy to say goodbye to The Rock, knowing he'd finally found peace and meaning in life again, and he was ready to move on, a happy and fulfilled man. Then we see him in Creed, and he's a sad, lonely old man with no friends or family left, just killing time until the end eventually comes. Reminds me of another character I could think of. I can see what they were going for here at least, the lonely, cynical old man who finds a new lease of life by bonding with a young protégé. I mean, the original Rocky did the same thing with Mickey, but it just feels totally out of place and undeserved here. Mickey was a man who had nothing and nobody in his whole life, and it made him hard and angry as a result. But Rocky's a different sort of character, 
We've seen him go through similar pain and loss in Rocky Balboa, and he came out the other side a stronger and more fulfilled man. Now it's just more of the same, only he's lost even more friends, and he's even more depressed this time around. The formula's the same, it's just the values that are different. And it completely undermines his character. Rocky was always about perseverance in the face of adversity, determination to succeed and triumph against the odds. He might have been a humble boxer and not all that bright, but he represented everything that was good and noble about the human spirit. Even a drunken asshole like me could appreciate him. Now I guess Ryan Coogler felt he needed to be deconstructed, because that's what we're all about these days, right? Picking heroic characters apart, because everything and everyone we used to look up to has to be broken down and diminished. I expect to leave a Rocky movie feeling pumped and uplifted, but I came out of Creed feeling downbeat and depressed, and there was only one cure for that kind of thing. In case I have to spell it out, Rocky is the complete opposite of this. 1. Every movie, Rocky only wins or goes the distance when he had people around to help him, because the movies weren't just about perseverance, but about how you can find strength in others, and that you don't need to struggle alone. Don't believe me? Let's take a look at the list. Rocky wouldn't have been able to go the distance and beat Apollo without Mickey and the support of his loved ones. He wouldn't have been able to beat Clubber Lang without Apollo. He wouldn't have been able to beat Drago without his team and his wife and his kids motivating him. And so on and so forth. So if anything, Creed showed Rocky faithfully by showing he's able to pull through when he had to someone to keep him going, because it reminded him that there's still more worth fighting for, and that it was now his turn to be the supportive figure in someone's life, a natural circle of which from his previous roles in his previous movies. Hmm, rather funny that this same issue from Drinker are from movies where the main, the original legend are no longer the main star and the main lead is a black guy trying to their best to live up to the legend while trying to make a new one for themselves. Hmm. Okay, okay, that is a me stretching a lot. But you can see why someone might come to that conclusion. I'm not trying to say the Drinker is racist, but rather pointing out the obvious issues that are in his videos. Issues that for an honest review channel to have make me question the legitimacy and trustworthiness of the Drinker. Because people hold the Drinker in such high regard compared to people like the Quartering or Nerd Erotic. So like it or not, there are people who genuinely trust his opinion and what he has to say. But back on track. Drinker, just like Rocky, completely missed the quite obvious character dynamic that was with Peter B. Parker. Because in the first Spider-Verse movie, Yes, Peter was indeed a washed up man, but that was because he helped that was because it helped add layers to him. That helped to separate him from any other Spider-Man that was out there. And also it creates a strong bond with Miles, with both having issues only being able to be fixed when they help each other. You know, like how characters arcs are supposed to work, making a character unique from other people. You know, like originality you've been claiming you've been wanting for so long. What adds to this is that it just demonstrates the hypocrisy of Drinker. Might I direct your attention to this video? Drinker has a big issue with flawless female characters. And fairly so, honestly. After all, a character who's perfect in every way, with no room to grow, is indeed a bad character. But how are you going to say this, yet encourage for Peter to be the same flawless in every way character? and actually have it to be a problem with the movie that he isn't. He isn't the perfect Peter Parker we all know. You see what I mean? Drinker is so quick to point out hypocrisy in media, yet doesn't realise he's also being hypocritical at the same time. Or are you just trying to appeal to the neckbeard neck audience? audience? And hell, Peter is amazing in the movie. Him being a happy man from his kid is such a natural progression and growth of his character from the previous movie, and the additions of his robe and slippers, is to show his character visually growing and changing. It's called visual storytelling. Another issue Drinker seems to not understand, even from his Glass Onion video still. Again, a movie isn't just sound, it's visual. And for the complaints of how he brought a baby along, 
It's because it's most likely done to show how far Peter has come, and the fact he's actually so good at being Spider-Man that he's able to keep his baby perfectly fine, not to mention he brought he brought her to a lobby with hundreds of other Spider-Men and women. That's secured to the max in a giant skyscraper with tons of security. That sounds pretty safe to me. So if anything, this movie makes Peter B a hidden badass. Not to mention, it's a movie. Reality will not be the same. After all, no one gets mad at the fact Lilo is allowed to keep a literal living machine of war and destruction on a planetary level as a pet. Or that people in How to Train Your Dragon just allow their kids to go around with several ton wild animals that fly and spit fire all on their own. It's because they're movies. For a reason. Sometimes you have to suspend your disbelief in order to be enthralled into the world. So yeah, not a surprise. The hypocritical drinker has completely made a fool out of himself again. While making me question whether he even understands what a movie is and how it works. And just to make crystal clear, I'm not calling Drinker a racist, sexist, or anything of the sort. This video was to simply criticise his video. And the straight up lying he's done to the point where it'll actually have a negative impact on how people will see the movie. Because I have seen people generally use his videos to point to a movie's quality. It sounds ridiculous, and that's because it is. And also, don't go over and attack the drinker either. Attacking someone in this situation helps absolutely nothing. And just makes you look like a worse tool than him. But that being said, that doesn't exempt you from criticism. So when you make obvious mistakes like this that hinder on problematic, you should expect pushback. So, might I add, his whole video on the Spider-Verse was alright. He gave his honest thoughts and, you know, it was fine up until this, but everything else was fine. I'm just criticising stuff that deserves criticism. But what do you guys think? Am I wrong? Have I got a point? You be the judge. And hell, if you have any useful criticism for me, please do share in the comments, because unlike Hypocritical Drinker, I hold up the same values I put onto others, and don't just try and blame it on modern audiences. So yeah, Leave your thoughts in the comments below. I've been the Pink King, and I will talk to you all later.